Holiday movies, you know, they're joyful, they're hopeful. Won't you guide my sleigh tonight? I think that there's something really beautiful and always lighthearted and magical about those films. It's all about Christmas in these movies, right? Every frame has to have just a ton of Christmas decor. This is gonna be so great. So great. These types of Christmas movies have become the real tradition. There's a nostalgia factor too that I think is very important that just taps into those heartwarming memories that we like to be reminded of. This is the AV Club's Why We Love, an examination into the reasons we're drawn to our pop culture obsessions. This time around, we're grabbing some cocoa, hopping into Santa's sleigh, and investigating our deeply held cultural attachment to holiday movies. Whether it's a tinsel-strewn Lifetime movie, or It's a Wonderful Life, these movies make us feel warm and fuzzy all over. This is Why We Love Holiday Movies. When I think of my favorite holiday movies, they're intrinsically, that, that, those memories are intrinsically linked to spending the holidays with my family and happy times. Um, and I also just think holiday movies, you know, they're joyful, they're hopeful. Um, and uh, who doesn't want to feel that from time to time? <laughs> I think it's a time where everybody gets to see their family. So maybe for some people, it's like a second reunion to their family. And it's like, it's like a whole thing of warmth, I think. It's built around it. Charlie Brown is a blockhead, but he did get a nice tree. I can never get enough of a Charlie Brown Christmas. I love the Vince Guaraldi trio, the Christmas time is here. I mean, that just gets me. And then all those kind of real bad animation Frosties and all those shows just remind me of my childhood. I think the holidays are a time that are just like a universally relatable time. But I also think it's just the nostalgia. It's just like reminding you that you always have a place to return to. And, and whether it's a physical place or a person who is, you know, still with us or isn't with us, there's that, that there's always that to comfort you. Oh, it was beautiful. I could hardly wait to try it out. Uh, do, do you not love it? Yeah. I like Christmas Story. You know, I like that for the sense of nostalgia. I think, you know, one thing that these holiday movies often do is give us a sense of nostalgia, you know, some idea of, you know, life was simpler back then. You know, all Ralph wanted was a, you know, Red Ryder BB gun. And that was, you had that always right with the world. I love holiday films because they're very much like comfort food to me. I, I get obsessed when Hallmark and Lifetime start running their holiday slate. I'm watching them all because I just feel like it's almost like visual Xanax. I think we spend all year busy as can be, running like crazy. I mean, I don't know about you, but like as soon as I see the first lights going up, I start to get really excited. And I think that these types of Christmas movies have become the real tradition, you know, for a lot of people. You know, you put them on, you want them on all day while you're going around. You might be decorating, you might be, you know, baking or whatever. You might just want to sit and actually watch, but they're an additional layer of comfort for people in that se in the season, I think. After all that we've been through, you're going to play hard to get with. Me now. Shush. Merry Christmas, Jack. Merry Christmas, Amy. But in the end, I think it's about the joy that it brings for people, even if they feel like they know what's going to happen or they feel like they know the guy and the girl are going to get together at the end and there's going to be an amazing kiss. You still walk away with a feeling, a sense of joy and contentment. And that's in the end what it's all about. Films become religious in the ways they're watched, in the ways they're consumed, in the ways communities gather together around them. So Christmas movies are sort of a, a great kind of example of this. You know, it's something we do on a yearly basis, like a lot of rituals, we do it once a year. They transport us into another world. They allow us a glimpse of, you know, what if, what if, what if the people really got together in the end? What if families reunited at the end of things, right? It may be radically different from our own experiences in the world, uh, but it gives us a you know, I think they give us hope and they give us courage, uh, you know, to think of them optimistically. Who are you? Well, Angel. What do you want from me? Change. People often need some, some Christmas joy and some Christmas cheer, but now, like this year more than ever. I There's so much going on, particularly in 2020. I think we need these movies now more than ever. Uh, because they're comforting. You know exactly what's going to happen. There's not really many surprises. In, in ordinary film or in other th television, 
uh, that would be a bad thing. But I think just letting yourself kind of wash away uh, with the lights and the snowy villages and all of that stuff can be really comforting right now. I think it's also just that there's so much going on right now that is so upsetting. And sometimes my brain wants to scream in rage and fear and um, I do. <laughs> and then I need to rebuild. And part of me rebuilding is letting my nervous system know that I'm safe, I'm okay, and that there's still hope. And sometimes I need to talk to my nervous system as if it's a little girl who wants to believe that there's a future where there is a smart businesswoman who's not interested in love and who gets caught off guard and swept off our feet by somebody who's gonna create a wonderful life with her. And I don't think I'm alone in that. I think that that's, um, that's a big thing right now. Uh, and I think it's getting more intense. The movies, you know, they're best do this. You know, that's what we, why we go to the movies, because we want to we escape our world, but, but it's more than escape. I, you know, I'm really cautious of that, because movies change us too. As we go to escape, we pick up something from that world and we bring it back into this world. Whether we know it or not, they change our perception of the world. Why representation is, is, is hugely important. Helpless psycho. Mom, I don't need you meddling in my social life. Oh, hi, Patrick. The fate that we cross paths. Fate or Kate. I think that once it was announced online that we were gonna be starring in it, along with Fran and along with Ellen Wong, who plays my, uh, my best friend in the movie, I think the response that we started to see was really overwhelming. Just so many fans of these movies are so, we're so grateful for the representation, even amongst our group of friends, you know, you don't realize how many people watch these movies until you agree to do one. And then all of a sudden it's like, you know, all of your peers um, who might not necessarily advertise that they are, that they love these movies are telling you like, oh my God, you have to do it. I love these movies. I watch them every year. So in some cases, it provides this, you know, this 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 fable of upward social mobility. It's a, a very affluent. It's very white. It's very heteronormative, and and it's inclusive to those people that identify with those particular identities. But it's equally as alienating, I think, if if you don't identify with those things. Which isn't to say you can't read them ironically. And in fact, many people have read them ironically. But it, there is a simplicity that that allows us to indulge in this fantasy of, um, I wouldn't necessarily say escape, but things are predictable and things are easy when we watch the Hallmark films, if you identify and associate with those particular middle-class attributes. Most of these movies are directed by 65-year-old straight men, um, and that's not okay, and it's not appropriate, so uh, I'm working really hard to create diversity that way from the inside out, not just sort of looking at it and going, all right, let's cast a couple of new colors, or let's make them lesbians, but like, how can you really get um, a more inclusive eye when it comes to the root of the storytelling. And, and that, I believe, comes from the writing and the directing. Um, and so that's the heart uh, of, and the ethos behind this directing program I'm starting. It's hard on the development side. You know, if you write characters in and then they get taken out in notes because someone in headquarters doesn't want it, you know? So it's frustrating. So it's good that the it's changing, you know? But it also does, a lot of it is the suits you know, the people who are in charge of making them. So if we can get more diversity in the people who are green lighting these projects, then, you know, we can write what we want to write. I'm working really, really, really hard with Hallmark right now about diversity and representation. And I think if we can continue to move in that correct um, direction, uh, I think people are, there's going to be an even wider audience for Hallmark movies because um, I think we're all very desperate to feel like everything's gonna be okay right now. You got that list? Checked it twice. Let's do this.